At first glance, this problem is pretty intimidating. I don't know of any straightforward technique that would solve a problem like this in general, but what's nice is that 8, 27, 12, and 18 all are factors of 2 and 3. That is, 8 is 2 cubed, 27 is 3 cubed, 12 is 2 squared times 3, and 18 is 2 times 3 squared. So a really nice substitution is to say a equals 2 to the x and b equals 3 to the x. If we do that, that means 8 to the x equals a cubed, 27 to the x is b cubed, 12 to the x is a squared b, and 18 to the x is a b squared. And now we have a much nicer situation to deal with. I hope you remembered your sum of cubes formula because that's exactly what we have in the numerator. This is a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. We can go ahead and cancel a plus b. Double check that a plus b isn't zero. That's true because two to the x plus three to the x is never zero for all real values of x. Multiply both sides by 6, and by a, b, we have this expression. Set this equal to 0 by moving everything to the left and distributing. We get a very interesting situation here. The trick that I would do is divide every term by b. Again, we can divide by b since b is 3 to the x, which is never 0. We're allowed to divide by b, and setting it up like this, looks like a quadratic in terms of a over b. In fact, this factors quite nicely, and we have a product equaling zero, either the first piece is zero or the second piece is zero, meaning the quantity a over b must be three halves or two thirds. What was a? It was two to the x. What was b? It was three to the x. So a over b is two to the x over three to the x, or using properties of exponents, 2 over 3 all to the x. And we're left with two relatively simple exponential equations. 2 thirds to the x equals 2 thirds. Since these bases are equal, that means their exponents must be equal. x must be 1. Or 2 thirds to the x equals 3 halves. We can make these bases similar by applying properties of negative exponents. If we raise this to the negative first, well, then the bases are equal and x must be negative 1. Thus, we have our two solutions to the original problem. But if you liked that problem, you'll like this one even more. I'll see you in that one.